Now today we're going to take a look at the element strontium. As you can see strontium uh, is a lovely shiny metal just like calcium and very similar to barium. Um, of course it's uh, just below calcium and above barium and uh, about three years ago I was able to buy a kilogram of this metal um, packed under argon uh, from China and I've only opened it up and I've recently put it in this very large two and a half litre jar which I filled with uh, liquid paraffin because it's very reactive. And one way of course of testing something's reactivity is uh, to react it with uh, something on the opposite side of the periodic table and I'm going to see what happens whenever we take these little pieces of strontium metal uh, and react them with some sulphur just in this little test tube and just for safety uh, I'm going to try the experiment outside. So here we are in the twilight and uh, I'm going to have to get myself a laboratory assistant very soon. It's rather fiddly doing these uh, chemical experiments uh, on my own. My so we have a burner lit and get some molten sulphur reacting with the strontium metal and see what happens. I'm wearing a face shield. And there she goes. Lovely red coloured flame reaction there. If I go back over we'll see it's probably fused with the glass as well. I'm sure there's been an action also there with the glass. So we'll take it back and see what we formed. Strontium sulphide is a, a grey amphimorphous uh, powder and it was uh, very smelly of hydrogen sulphide. So strontium metal itself, uh, well, it was of course isolated by Sir Humphrey Davy as he isolated so many alkali and alkali earth metals. And I have a small amount here stored under uh, some paraffin oil and we're going to take a lump of it, that's about uh, three grams, and just put it into water. Lots of effervescence as you can see and of course the gas given off by any alkaline earth metal and is of course hydrogen but of course it's tainted by lovely uh, strontium ions giving it a beautiful red coloured flame. I'll try it one more time. Well, why not scale it up a little bit and do a bit of bucket chemistry? This is a piece of strontium that uh, whenever I was cutting it up with uh, an axe, because that's the only way I could cut it up, it was such a large lump, I had to dispose of some of it in a bucket of water. And as you can see, the lovely red flames, brick red flames from the, the strontium ions. Now, the real test, of course, is uh, strontium is a very reactive metal, and in fact, if it's finely powdered, it'll spontaneously combust something we might try later on but what I'm going to do is just give it some activation energy and see how it burns in the Right, watch paper and retire immediately. Wow. Sparks flying everywhere. Copious amounts of uh, strontium peroxide output. Strontium oxide. It's not finished yet, and you can see why it's used in flares and uh, pyrotechnics and fireworks. It's a beautiful red flame. Ah, oh, this goes again. And uh, I think just for entertainment purposes, and that if you've got two minutes of your life, uh, I'm going to let you watch that uh, again. Up to the uh, lovely music of uh, Chopin's Nocturne number no. 2. Uh, so you can sit back and relax and uh, listen to a bit of uh, Chopin. And if you whiz forward if you want, uh, there's a good some nice slow-mos uh, later on um, which you'll be able to see of all the sparks flying everywhere. Fortunately the iPhone doesn't pick up just how intensely red the ionization energy is uh, whenever it bursts into flames but uh, I say if you've got two minutes of your life uh, sit back and enjoy Chopin's Nocturne number no. two in E flat minor. Just at the end of the recording there's a beautifully timed shower of sparks
my email for any suggestions of experiments you'd like to see.